students welcome back to plus 1 biology so the continuation of our topic kingdom monera the chapter biological classification so under kingdom monera we have completed archaebacteria in the last class you know archaebacteria belong to the extreme habitats like hypersaline regions high cold regions high salty regions high temperatures etc okay and you remember methanogens halophilus thermoacidophilus etc okay then today we are just moving on to eubacteria the true bacteria members under kingdom monera so these are the true members satisfying all the features of kingdom monera okay and here archaebacteria as you have studied they possess specialized cell wall and here you bacteria also have a cell wall made up of peptidoglycan okay anyway you bacteria when we classify there are three major groups okay the first group cyanobacteria then autotrophic bacteria then heterotrophic bacteria so listen to the three major groups of u bacteria the true bacteria the first one cyanobacteria these members were earlier placed under plantae so this is also known with a previous name blue green algae okay they were under algae earlier so why they have shifted to this kingdom is because they have a prokaryotic cell not a eukaryotic cell like algae their cells uh, do not possess a true nucleus so they belong to kingdom monera now and the same name is also their blue green algae so understand cyanobacteria first okay the members forms this kind of filamentous colony okay and the single cell segregate to form a filament like structures here and most of the members possess some kind of beads on string like structure see the typical example here drawn is nostoc and this nostoc is having spherical cells which resembles beads on a string pattern and the cell is not possessing a true nucleus it can contain some granules and a very important feature the cell all the colony is enveloped by a mucilaginous sheath okay the whole body is protected by a mucilaginous sheath or a gelatinous sheath in cyanobacteria and another unique property you can see the cyanobacteria are able to fix atmospheric nitrogen they are able to carry out nitrogen fixation with the help of the special cells known as heterocyst with the help of this special cells heterocyst cyanobacteria can perform nitrogen fixation okay they can contain a specialized enzyme for nitrogen fixation so this heterocyst help in nitrogen fixation then remember about the cell nature prokaryotic cell without a defined nucleus so many granules in the cells and all other components of a prokaryotic cell and it is enveloped by a gelatinous sheath a mucilaginous sheath okay then similar member only anabena also the size of the cell and the shape of the cells uh, differ anyway this is about the cyanobacteria examples are nostoc and anabena and its explanation is not much required for the present syllabus and for entrance point of view we will discuss it in a, along with the questions so about this u bacteria second type as you have studied autotrophic u bacteria these are the bacteria which can produce the food they can produce their food themselves either using sunlight or using chemical energy if they use sunlight they are phototrophic or photosynthetic we can call phototrophs and if they are dependent on the chemical energy for producing food they are chemotrophs okay and photosynthetic see your spelling is photosynthetic members chemosynthetic members okay here they use sunlight 
for producing food. Here they use chemical energy for producing food. Okay. The cyanobacteria are also photosynthetic. Okay. Cyanobacteria members are also photosynthetic. Then, chemosynthetic one example you know, you are familiar. Hmm? Then, nitrosomonas, nitrococcus, along with the nitrogen cycle, we will discuss it in detail later. Okay. The nitrosomonas, nitrococcus, such members, that during the oxidation process, they derive energy for preparing food. And here we will discuss it elaborated in other chapter, mineral nutrition. Okay, then the second case. So, autotrophic one. Okay, the second type of heterotrophic one. They cannot produce their food. They are dependent on others for their deriving energy. The parasites are dependent on another living matter or living body for deriving energy. For their energy or food needs, parasites depend on another living organism. That organism is known as host. Host and parasite. You are familiar. Where saprophytes de depend on another dead body or dead organism. Dead body for food. For energy. Where symbiont, the, they live with another organism. Live mutually benefited uh, with another organism. Rhizobium is an example for a symbiotic bacterium. You have learned it. Rhizobium along with the uh, higher plants. Then saprophytes, you know, there are many bacteria which are helping uh, for decomposition. Okay, pseudomonas, bacillus, there are so many bacteria which help in decomposition. They are saprophytes. They uh, derive nutrients from the dead organisms and help in the chemical break breakdown of that. Okay, the, so the saprophytes are they, symbionts are they, parasites are they. Okay. I think it's clear. Parasites along with heterotrophs, then saprophytes, symbionts. These are phototrophs, chemotrophs, parasites, saprophytes, symbionts. Then also cyanobacteria. Okay. Then our next topic is how the, I think it's very simple, basics only. You have learned already in the ninth standard. The reproduction in bacteria. Our next topic is Simple, simple topics only. There is no any elaboration. How the bacteria reproduce? What is a common strategy of reproduction in bacteria? The members of the kingdom Monera, most common type of reproduction method is fission. Fission is the most common method. That means one bacterium, it divides. First, nucleus division or like, I mean there is no any nucleus, genetic material divide. Okay, this is a fission method. It produces two bacteria. Two bacteria. Okay, so fission is the most common method of um, reproduction. And there is pore formation. Another method is pore formation. The bacteria, most of the bacteria form endospores. One bacterium itself produces spore. Here is a bacterium. At the time of uh, reproduction, it is just concentrated into a spore. Its content will be forming a spore. Okay. Endospore formation. So, bacterium also reproduce by forming endospores. And another important method of bacterial reproduction is conjugation. This is considered as a primitive sexual reproduction. It is considered as a primitive type of sexual reproduction. In conjugation, two bacteria of the opposite strain, one is considered as plus strain and another, another one is considered as a minus strain. One which donate the genetic material is, uh, one which donate its genetic material is plus strain, one which receives is the minus strain. So this bacteria come closer and they just conduct through a conjugation canal or a conjugation tube. The two bacterium meets, okay, through a conjugation tube, they exchange the genetic material. This genetic material is exchanged to the next. Okay, further we will discuss later. Anyway, in conjugation, that is also a reproduction strategy method in bacteria in which the two bacteria strains come closer and they exchange their genetic material through a conjugation canal or conjugation tube. This is considered as a primitive type of sexual reproduction. Which are the methods of reproduction in kingdom and era? 
Common method is binary fission. Second, endospore formation. Third, conjugation. This just names are mentioned in your textbook. That is enough for your board exam point of view. Then you have another uh, topic as homework. You have to write the significances of bacteria. You have to write the uses of bacteria and you have to write the harms of bacteria. There are so many things to write. The major ones you write. No need to write all and all. Just write the major uses of bacteria. You know the ba if the bacteria are not existing in nature, there is no any possibility of nitrogen fixation, uh, decomposition like. So it's very important they have fundamental role in nitrogen fixation. Then they have many important role in decomposition. All these important facts you have to write. Okay? You have to write this all important facts. In addition to this uh, nitrogen fixation, decomposition etc. You have to strictly write the major uses of bacteria. Like lactobacillus used in what? Um, uh, I mean our milk. Okay, dairy industry. And also the usage of um, bacteria in medicine, production of antibiotics, streptomycin like. Okay, you have to write some important ones among that. And another side, the harms of the bacteria also you have to write. These are all the benefits. Harms of the bacteria. Uh, what are the plant diseases? Major plant diseases caused by bacteria. And which are the major human diseases caused by bacteria. This is a homework for you. You have to work out and find out this from home. Then you will get maximum. Okay. So anyway, the first homework for you is find out the uses and harmful effects of um, bacteria. Okay. The uses or somewhat we have discussed it now. Again, there it is worst. And you have to write almost all major uses of bacteria and almost all major harms of bacteria. Okay. The harms mainly the plant diseases and human diseases. Focus on only to that. Name, just name is enough. Okay. And then we have another small topic under this kingdom on era that is the member mycoplasma. This also now belongs to the member bacteria, and this are considered as the smallest organisms in nature. Still, there are some other um, organisms which are less than a life we consider anyway. So, mycoplasma. During the time of discovery, they were named as PPLO, pleuropneumonia like organisms, because they, in appearance, first appeared in front of the scientists as pneumonia causing organisms, pneumonia like, pleuropneumonia like. And the pleura means the lungs membrane. The pneumonia causing bacteria, they resemble. At that time, they were named as PPLO. Pleuro pneumonia like organism. Okay. Now the group is vast with more members discovered. It is mycoplasma. And myco usually the term is from fungi. Actually, they are not under fungi. They are under the kingdom monera. And they are not actually bacteria. But along with bacteria, we can say that because of some resemblances. But unlike the bacteria, they don't possess a membrane. And their appearance, we can say, pouch leg appearance, they have. There is no any definite membrane for them, but definite cell wall for them. So their appearance is like, it is called like pouch egg like. Okay, anyway, the mycoplasma is also under kingdom monera. So when you write the features about mycoplasma, they are the smallest organisms. They are the smallest living cells known. They are the smallest living cells known. They completely lack cell wall. They don't have cell wall. They don't have cell wall. Okay. They survive without oxygen. They can survive without oxygen. They can survive anaerobic. Okay? Without oxygen. And very important thing, they are pathogenic to plants and animals. Causing diseases to plants and 
animals about mycoplasma so about the mycoplasma they were first observed as ppelo pleuronemonia like organism and they are the smallest living cells so so far known and they completely lack cell wall they don't have a cell wall their appearance is like a pouch egg and they can live anaerobically and they many of them causes diseases to many of them cause diseases to plants and animals that's all for today and the next class we will begin our next kingdom kingdom protista and we will work out with questions along with the live class okay thank you